Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 series. In today's episode, we're going to help you get set up on the terminal in a Windows environment for SDL3. So if you like using Linux, for instance, like I do, and you see on many of my videos, you can set up the Windows subsystem for Linux on a Windows machine, which gives you basically a Linux environment in a terminal setup. Now, the challenge is getting graphical applications to show up because you just have a terminal. So I'll first show you how to do this in Windows subsystem for Linux. And for a lot of you, this is just going to work and you can go ahead and pause there. But if you have trouble, I'm going to go ahead and show you another application called MOBA X, which is really useful for forwarding graphics displays from your terminal environment so you can pop up a window essentially and view your SDL3 application. So with that said, we'll have a lot of fun and I'll give you again two ways to get set up. This is my preferred way to work because I do most of my development on Linux anyways. So then when I'm on my Windows machine, I can just go ahead and continue that workflow. So if you want to do that for your SDL development, this is again the video for you. And let's go ahead and dive into the video. Alrighty folks, so we are going to go ahead and set up SDL3 on the Windows subsystem for Linux. So again, you're looking at Windows right now, but this is going to be for WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux 1 or 2, or perhaps a future version 3, 4, etc. And this is a cool tool from Microsoft that basically gives you a terminal here, which is basically an installation, a full installation of Linux, like for example, Ubuntu, which I'm using uh, if I do LSB release. Uh, you can see I'm using Ubuntu 20 here, but 22, 24, 25, uh, any of those future versions should work just fine here. And uh, anyways, we can use Linux here. Now, what you'll first notice is, you know, you'll want to know where we are. I'm in my home directory, uh, but I'm going to actually just want to work in my Windows file system. So let's go into the uh, C directory here. Um, let's go to users, uh, my directory here, and I'm just going to go on the desktop. Uh, for better or for worse here. And uh, again, I'm going to show you how to set things up just so you can do full sort of Linux development on your uh, system here. So anyways, let's go ahead and grab SDL. I'm going to grab the uh, actual source code here. And we're going to need to set up a few things in our Windows subsystem for Linux environment in order to get this set up here. Uh, so we're going to need to clone this uh, SDL folder here. And I believe I've already got one uh, set up here on my desktop uh, for SDL3 from one of my other videos, which you might have seen, where I set up SDL through MinGW, which is a full sort of, that's doing everything on Windows. But here we're going to do our development on uh, basically the Linux subsystem here and build a Linux-based program, but still be able to run and view it. Okay, so that's our goal here of what we're trying to achieve. Okay, now uh, you are going to see me do some setup. I'm going to assume you have a relatively fresh install of Windows Subsystem for Linux. If you've got some stuff installed, that's great. Um, hopefully you'll have all the tools. Again, we don't need too many tools to otherwise get set up with SDL. Um, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and show here after this GitHub repository finishes downloading is GCC. We're going to need to install Make, uh, CMake, a few of these tools here. Again, just so you're set up for your Linux development on a Windows uh, machine. Okay, so uh, anyways, uh, looks like we got the SDL folder here. I can see the Intuit. I'm going to make a build uh, directory here uh, as well, and let's go into that build directory. Now I'm going to need to run some tools like CMake, uh, Make, uh, for instance. Uh, I'm going to need git, uh, which looks like I have. Um, so you're probably going to want to do sudo apt install build uh, essentials. Let's see here. And, you know, type in whatever your password is or whatever you think it is. Uh, or is it build essential? I forget what exactly what it is. Uh, but that's probably the basic thing that you need here. Uh, basically what this has is tools like make. Um, it might even have git here. You can kind of read through here. It's got a version of G++, make, as you can see here, uh, which we're going to need to use to compile the SDL3 uh, libraries or do our build. Uh, and again, the next thing I'm going to install is CMake. Um, there might be some other tools that are uh, installed here as well, but again, a relatively quick uh, install. Um, okay, so let's just give that a moment. Let's do sudo apt install CMake. Uh, that'll be our next one here. Small 28 megabyte program. That's actually not too bad. A lot of programs are quite large these days. It uh, looks like it's going to be with CMake. Um, uh, or suggesting to add the documentation in Ninja, which is another build system that you could use. I'm again just going to use Make, but uh, Ninja is also a great build system. Uh, in some cases, folks have shown that it's faster. Um, and again, I'm just 
giving you a few interesting tidbits of knowledge while we wait for this to download. Luckily, my internet is going relatively fast today. So anyways, <laughs> we'll keep going through here. Uh, I think that's the main tools that uh, I have here. So go ahead and run CMake. Uh, dot dot moves me up to the directory for uh, SDL, where it's basically going to find a CMake list file and uh, try to produce a make file based on that. Now, if this works, that's great. Um, again, since we're in a pretty fresh Windows subsystem for Linux install, we might have to do a little bit more work here. Um, but we can see some good things like it's finding the uh, glib uh, library and so on. And again, what CMake is, if you're not familiar, it's a meta build system. So it's going to help us build uh, build files. So you can generate uh, a build file for a Visual Studio project, for instance. Uh, we're just going to use make. Uh, you can use other things like Ninja and so on. And again, that's the idea of what we're exactly doing at this step at this moment here. So it's going to look and make sure that we have all the dependencies that we need here. This will just take a moment or two, uh, and then we'll go ahead and continue forward. It looks like it's finding most stuff. And for my Ubuntu 20 system, uh, the GCC compiler that's installed with Build Essential is GCC 9, if you care. Uh, at the time of this recording, you can see it's the uh, year 2025. There is GCC version 14. So you might in decide to use that or Clang, um, you know, a more recent version, totally fine. Um, anyways, uh, so anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this video uh, move forward and then we'll continue with the installation. Okay, so it looks like it is complaining about not finding uh, X11 here. Because uh, what is X11 or Wayland? Well, those are the windowing libraries for well, creating Windows applications here. So we could try to install those. Let's see if we can find X11. Uh, let's go ahead and search for it. Uh, X11. It's probably lib X11 uh, dev or something uh, of that nature here. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Uh, X11. And again, I'm just searching through the repository of uh, packages here. Uh, and again, X11 might not have been a great uh, search here. Uh, let's try X11 dev, something of that nature here. Um, and this is looking a little bit more promising here. Uh, lib X11 uh, dev. Let's go ahead and see if that resolves some of the issues here. sudo apt uh, install. I want to type out the exact names here. Lib X11 dev. Let's see if that resolves some of the issues here. Um, anyway, I'm just going to kind of go through this and uh, do this live here from, again, a relatively fresh install of Ubuntu. Uh, so to use version uh, 20 of Ubuntu, which is a little bit older at the time of this recording, uh, X11 is sort of a fine windowing system versus uh, Wayland, which is the newer one. So anyways, you might need to install some different things here. Uh, and you can try to rerun this CMake. Uh, let's see if it uh, resolves uh, faster. So now it's found. Uh, X11 here, it's a little bit more happy, uh, but now it's complaining about OpenGL, uh, I guess, not being found here. Uh, and if you keep getting those messages and you don't like them or aren't happy about them, um, you can, of course, um, rebuild from scratch, which means basically delete all of this build folder and uh, start again here. Um, let's see here. Let's just open up this link. Uh, let's see if I can... Uh, copy it here. This is always uh, fun to do here. Let's select it. And then again, if you're new here, right click it and let's just paste it in here. And let's see if we get some interesting uh, dependencies here. Uh, let's see here. It went to 18. Uh, okay. This looks like most of the ones that we want here. Yeah. It's got most of the audio ones. Let's just go ahead. And uh, the other one that is going to search for is Mesa. Uh, which does uh, the graphics uh, and emulation. So let's go ahead and just try that. Uh, let's trust this. Uh, paste anyways, okay. Uh, and let's go ahead and try to install these dependencies. So again, I'll fast forward here, but 235 megs shouldn't take too long. Okay, so we've got everything installed. Let's go ahead and try our CMake command. Again, it looks like it's finding more of the dependencies and becoming more happy. So again, this might be a step that you have to perform.
and it looks like it is relatively happy and we'll be able to do our build. So if I do ls here, what you'll notice is we should have a uh, basically a make file here, which we're going to use for our build system. So we do make dash j uh, and and let's do 16, which will basically use 16 threads to try to build the SDL3 uh, libraries here on Linux. Uh, if this doesn't work with 16, just run make. It'll take a little bit longer, but the parallel build should be uh, quite fast here. Okay, and if all goes well, it looks like we have a full build here and our SDL3 library here. Okay, that's great news here. So uh, we have our library built and I'm gonna run sudo make install, which is gonna set up some paths here just to make sure that we are able to find basically our library easily. We'll use a tool called pkgconfig or pkg-config. Uh, let me write it out here. Um, which will basically tell us the path to the SDL library here. So I can do the path for SDL3 for the libraries and the C flags, or I can specify both of these at once here. And these are the flags that I wanna feed into the compiler here. Okay, now that we've got SDL3 built for the Windows subsystem for Linux, let's go ahead and find in SDL3 uh, some examples here that we can try to run here. And we want to find a relatively simple example here. Um, so let's just try to find, um, actually in the SDL3 documentation, a relatively simple uh, command or collection of uh, code here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I like using, if I just look at the complete index here, I think it's SDL3, uh, well, let's actually, uh, there's actually a hello program here we can use uh, somewhere, hello.c. Uh, let's just grab it in the docs here. Uh, and this is one that's going to be nice because it's uh, showing the callback API, which is new. And basically, I just want to copy this code and paste it in. Uh, but it's a little hello world program uh, that will do the trick for us. So let's go ahead and open up our shell here. Let's try to do a hello.c uh, program here. I'm going to paste into Vim, uh, and again, it, you should be able to find uh, this file, right? Uh, we are on our desktop uh, where we did our uh, SDL build here. So if you don't use Vim, uh, no problem. You can still have that hello program. Uh, you know, you can edit it in Notepad even if you want, but just paste in some source and let's see if we can try to compile this uh, as such. It's going to give some linker errors because we do need to use those pkg uh, config flags here. So let's go ahead and give those a try. Package config, libs, c flags, sdl3, and let's see if it'll do the build for us. Looks like it did the build. Let's see if it does the run for us. And if I try to run this, uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Uh, looks like it works. So if you're on WSL uh, 1 or 2, it might just work. If we install all the dependencies, it might just work. Now, what I want to talk about in the second half of this video is what happens if it doesn't. What if you got a display error, the dreaded display error, for instance? Because maybe I've run or you've watched some other YouTuber and they've configured something uh, differently with their uh, display and you've tried export, uh, you know, display zero or something, whatever that command is. <laughs> but it just doesn't work here. Uh, so what I'd like you to try is MOBA X uh, on the other hand. Uh, and this is a really cool tool here for working with Windows and those X11 uh, based Windows, as I was just talking about here. Uh, and we can just download this, and there's a free version. Uh, if you really like it, um, you know, you should support these developers probably. Um, it looks like they're a small time shop, although I don't know, but uh, you can, uh, you know, buy a, a version of it. Um, but, anyways, I'm going to download this tool here. Uh, I'm just going to download the. Uh, Let's just do the portable version here. Uh, so you can basically just run the executable. Uh, but this is another way to spawn a terminal uh, that will basically create a uh, instance of your Windows subsystem for Linux. So it'll be running this guy, but within a MOBA X environment, which can forward out the graphics uh, display for X11 based applications, uh, perhaps Wayland applications as well. I'm not sure here, uh, but let's go ahead and just uh, 
unzip this uh, application. Let's go ahead and extract all here and just follow along. You could do this with uh, MOBA X or the installer. Either version will work just fine here and let's go ahead and uh, launch it. And just give it a moment to launch if it's the first time that you're launching this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, dark mode here just to keep in theme. Uh, I'm going to allow this for my security. And again, just treat this like your WSL session here. Now I can spawn my WSL here. Um, I can't actually remember which one it is, but I'm going to go ahead and do this one. <laughs> let's say that uh, we have it here. Uh, let's see. Okay. It refused. Uh, let's see if I can. Uh, that, that must be because it's already running. So let's go ahead and shut this one down. So looks like it worked. Uh, let's go ahead and try that again here uh, and see if we get any errors. Uh, network error, connection refuse. Okay, let's launch this one then. Okay, so that one seems to be happy. I just can't remember which one I had. Um, and basically, uh, if I do ls, again, it's going to be the same thing here. Let's go to our uh, C users directory. Uh, that's me, Mike, uh, and then the desktop, sdl3 build. Um, and again, I can try to rebuild this uh, program here, gcc. Uh, maybe with the bug symbols this time, just to you know encourage that. Let's output this as let's output as program two, uh, just to show that it's a little bit different here. Uh, and I'll do pkg config again with my C flags, the libraries, and SDL three again, just to show you that it's the same uh, environment here. And let's again try to run program two. And uh, again, this should be running through. You'll see a uh, the little MOBA uh, X uh, I guess icon here. And you'll get your window in this uh, windowed environment here, okay? Which is really, really cool. So two ways using WSL or MOBA uh, X to get your SDL up and running. And again, just to use your Windows machine like a Linux machine. So hopefully that was helpful, folks. Again, just a brief recap. We used MOBA X here on the second half here. Uh, in the first half, I showed you how to set up SDL on your terminal and again, WSL 1 or WSL 2 or whatever version you're using sometimes will just work with the display, but MOBA X is really nice here because it will just uh, do the display automatically, as it's mentioned here, to the Windows desktop. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was helpful, and I'll look forward to seeing you in some actual SDL lessons uh, as you continue on with this series. Alrighty, folks, I hope you enjoyed that video. And as always, you can find more and you can find all these SDL3 lessons on my website, courses.mshot.io, which has them all listed out. So if you want to keep track of your progress as you go through these lessons, feel free to use this as a resource. And otherwise, we have a great forum over on forum.mshot.io. If you want to discuss other computer science topics, SDL, graphics programming, programming language things, feel free to join us there. All right, folks, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you are otherwise uh, finding some way to get SDL3 set up so that we can go ahead and continue and build some cool applications. All righty, folks, with that said, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.